wasn't that nice? Hello, I'm Dr. Piers Britton. I'm Jessica Greenwell. And I'm Ron Witte. Welcome to I Remember Television Again. It's 1949. The turn of a new decade is near. Peace on Earth is closer to being in reach than it has been for decades. The war is over and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO has been signed. Economic prosperity is just around the corner and with it, the golden age of television. In the month of November, a TV series brings Americans the warmth and positivity of a New Year's promise. It's the Ruggles. Every 30-minute episode of this endearing family sitcom is a vision of the suburban American dream. Charles Ruggles stars as the faithful man of the house with the charisma of a star performer and the jolly nature of Kris Kringle himself, rosy cheeks and all. With one of the longest careers in show business to date, dating him back to the era of silent film, Charles knew better than anybody how to brighten up a television screen. The remaining numbers of the Ruggles family complete the picture of perfection. Mr. Ruggles brings home the bacon. His devout and loving wife, Margaret, prepares it, and the whole family serves a delightful side dish of bountiful laughs. The lineup of kids are Shannon, the astute college student, Chuck, the good nature high schooler, and the adorable twins, Donna and Donald. Joy, generosity, and more warm-hearted family values take the lead in tonight's special Christmas Eve episode, bringing us back to the days before holidays had phones and tablets, disconnecting us from sincere togetherness. So let's commemorate the true meaning of the Christmas spirit as I remember television. You, uh, you wrote that letter together, didn't you? Yes, Daddy. Well, then you can both read it together to me. So I'll tell you, Donna, you start, and Donald, you buddy in any time okay. you want. Okay. All right, sit okay. down there. Let's hear what you've written. Great. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, dear Santa Claus. Yeah, uh, dear Santa Claus. Um, we know that with all the kids in the world, it must be very hard for you to keep track of who's been good and who's been bad. And so we thought we'd help you out. Mm -hmm. We're going to tell you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Nana has been a very good girl all year long. And Donald has been very good also. Yeah, how about that, Donald? Have you been good? Oh, well, I've been good more times than I've been bad, I think. Oh, you think? Oh, oh, so you think you'd perhaps rather skip the uh, being bad part, huh? Mm. Besides, I've been punished for being bad. Oh. Now, we've been sorry every time, then. You have. Well, then you have a point there. Now, go on, then. Okay, okay. Let's see. Um... Oh, so please, Santa, as long as we've all been so very good, we'd like to have you bring Donald a train. A real train that runs. Real? Well, how about the Super Chief? <laughs> I don't know. We like Gary very much. Mm. So we think our sister Sharon should have a couple more boyfriends. That would make it more exciting. So please, Santa, bring her some. Bring her? Oh, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, you know. Boyfriends just don't grow in bunches, you know, like bananas. Now, wait just a minute here. Yeah. Looks like the kids have been peeking into your dream, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> you mean about Jeff Logan, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, go ahead, kids. More? Okay. Yeah, there's more, Dad. All right. And please, Santa, bring our brother Chuck a car with hot rods. Yeah. Now, you've said something. <laughs> On a condition that he lets us ride in. <laughs> Mommy wants a new bed. The one she's got now has got lumps. Oh, just because you hid some of your old toys in the mattress. Yeah. That's oh, right. Mommy. And we'd like to, you to bring uh, Daddy a checkbook. Uh, we can write out some more money. A checkbook? Well, now that is something I'm going to need, believe me. No kidding. <laughs> we think that's all, Santa. Mm. Fine. There's very truly Donna Ruggles. Mm. And Donald Ruggles. Well, now that's a very nice letter, kid. Yes. Mm. Wait a minute. Uh, I got a PC. A, a what? A PC? What's that? Please, Santa. 
Oh, no, you mean P.S. Oh, P.S. Please look around and see if you have anything left. And if you do, give it all at you and you're as lucky as we are. Uh, oh, we thank you. Oh, that's yeah. fine. That's very nice. Okay, now you want... Do you think Santa will like our letter, Mom? Well, he certainly will. That's a very fine letter. Sure it Can is. Can we go mail it? Yeah, you go mail it, but don't go wandering all around the block now. Run along. Yeah, you're okay. Okay. We've got to be good until after Christmas. Oh, yeah. Jingle Okay. What, what? Where are we going to put the tree this year? The tree? Oh, by the window, I guess. Well, now, I'll tell you. I thought that perhaps about the tree, that maybe this year we, we wouldn't, wouldn't have, have a tree. tree. We wouldn't. <laughs> oh, my golly. I say that every year, don't yeah, I? Right along about the Well, time. all right. I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys. And I hope it'll be the biggest and prettiest one on the block. <laughs> okay. Come okay. on, once we give me checkers, too. Oh, well. Joe? Yeah, dear. Do you realize 22 Christmases we've had... Twenty-two Christmases. Oh, my gosh. Don't remind me of that, Mark. And we still have our health. That's something to be thankful for. Yeah, yeah, it certainly is. It certainly is. <clears throat> and almost everything else that we need. Uh -huh. God. Well, it has been a good year, honey. I'll say that for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wish we could share our blessings. Oh, you mean you think we have more than, we, uh, more than enough? Well, you know, I mean, with... With somebody less fortunate than we are. Well, we always manage to do our bit, dear, you know, the community chest and any other charities that we can afford. Oh, no, no, dear, I don't mean that. I mean something more, more personal. Oh, you mean, for instance, like Ernie and your mother, maybe, huh? Oh, we always take care of them. Oh, uh, well, why don't we invite them over this Christmas? You know, they'll probably be alone. Darling, don't you remember I told you that Ernie is taking Mother to Denver for Christmas oh, to spend it with his family? that's right, that's right, that's right. Well, we'll think of something now, Margaret. Don't worry. Ah, uh, now watch this movie. Really good this time. One, two, three. Oh, no. Oh, no, get in. <laughs> oh, I do wish I could think of somebody. Huh? Oh, well, Tom, Blinky and Pop. Let me see who? Blinky and his pop. Blinky and his pop, huh? Now there's an idea, by golly. Hey! Mm. I know of someone. Who, who? Elaine Schumann. Ela Elaine Schumann. You remember, mm -hmm. she was in my graduating class. <clears throat> she has less than anybody I can think of. And she and her mother will probably be alone this year. Her father passed away, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we hardly know her, sis. Why don't we just ask Marianne? Oh, now, Chuck, dear, that isn't the idea at all. We want to give to somebody who, who really needs it. Well, Elaine needs it. What about it, Father? Well, I tell you, I'm not in favor of doing things on the spur of the moment, Sharon. Well, you said that we should share our good fortune with others. No, it was your mother who said that. Well, Father, don't you think... Ah, uh, no, of course, I still am in favor of it. Well, then why all the objections? Well, what I object to, dear, is that uh, waiting for the holidays to do something for someone that you should have done a long time ago. Oh, Father, for peace. Well, now, sake. look here. You, you didn't go out of your way to be nice to this girl all during the year, did you? Father, I haven't seen her since I started at college. Mm. She hasn't been coming to any of our parties. Oh, I see. Well, did you ever stop to think that there might be a reason for that? Mm, what do you mean, Dad? Well, for in the first place, maybe she, uh, because if you say she was not so well off, maybe she couldn't afford to go to college. Well, I'm almost certain of and that. And by the same reason, she probably couldn't go to parties, you see. Uh, that, that, that's the same deal. Well, I, I know that. Maybe and she has to work. Been Ill. Mm, yeah, you know that. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. That's just what I mean, Sharon. You know all that, and yet you didn't do anything about it until now. You know, kids, let me tell you something. All around us, every day, we see someone who needs help. But do we do anything about it? No. Instead, we wait until Christmas rolls around, by golly. And then we start buying gifts for each other and writing letters to Santa Claus and dropping a few pennies in the Salvation Army bucket. And for a few short days only, we have a feeling of peace and goodwill toward our fellow man. But, Charles, isn't that one of the main reasons for Christmas? I don't get what you mean, dear. Well, to remind us to do the things that we, that we should do. Yes, Father, how about this? Well, now, why should we have to be reminded? <laughs> I just don't want our kids, dear, to grow up and think that they can do, uh, you know, neglect all their duties throughout the entire year and make up for it by one good deed at Christmas time. That's all. Mm -hmm. You've got something there, Dan. Well, I guess we better forget about Elaine then. No, I didn't say that, Sharon. I just wanted you to know how I feel. Well, isn't that the same thing? Uh, well, I'll leave it up to you. Pass that to Donna. Okay. Another one for Donna. Oh, Joe, Joe. Oh, Chuck. Pass that to Chuck. Thank you. Sharon, here's for you. Oh, Chuck. 
Christmas cards, Christmas, Christmas cards. cards. I love to get Christmas cards. Yeah, you do, really. Christmas oh, cards, yeah. and you know, early, too, by golly. Because, you know, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's a good deal, because then you can send to those that you may have forgotten. <laughs> What's the matter? Somebody sends you one with a feather in it? Yes. Listen to this. What? At Christmas time, don't send me money. Just let me touch your lips, my honey. Oh, oh, no, no. Oh, dear. Now, who sent that? I don't know. It isn't signed. Uh, you most probably. Or your friend, the coach. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. Jerry couldn't be that icky. Mm. I got one from Grandma. Oh, did you dare to read it? It says, Merry Christmas to Donna. I hope Santa brings you all you want. Oh, my golly. <laughs> we'll have to send Grandma one of those rhyming dictionaries. Wait a minute. I got one from Grandma, too. Yeah. Happy you, Ty, little boy. Oh, Santa brings you many a toy from oh, Grandma. Oh, where oh, does Mother oh, get those cards? Very juvenile. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't she know we're grown up? Well, here's my little contribution. <laughs> when I picked out this little voice, I fades my dough and takes my choice. So happy Noel to all you jokes with a Merry Christmas and all the whites. <laughs> oh, Ben Milligan. Ben Milligan, how'd you know? Well, who else? Well, at least he didn't send back the card we sent him last year, by God. Uh, <laughs> May we be? Well, here's someone who did, yeah, Mrs. Who? Ben Markham. Mrs. Ben Markham? Tis the season that follows the fall, so Merry Christmas to one and all. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Don't tell me we sent a card out like that, Margaret. Huh? Don't you remember? Yeah, well, yeah, I know, but it's so silly. Everybody knows that Christmas is in the winter and that winter is the season that follows the fall. And that, but who picked that card out originally? <laughs> You did, Father. You did. Well, no wonder she sent it back. Huh? <laughs> May we be excused? Huh? Let me finish. We want to go upstairs and wrap packages. All right. Well, run along, then. Run along. Run along. Yeah. I mean, you know, wrap those packages good, too, you know, because... Thanks, Governor. Yes, sir. Governor? Where do you get that governor stuff? That's grown-up talk. Ah, run along. Oh. Go on. <laughs> those kids are grown up too doggone fast, you know. Um, hey, Father, would you like to go over to Elaine Schumann's with us? Well, that's what we decided on, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, both of us. Well, then sure, sure we'll go. Okay. But first, you know, I think if we've all finished, we ought to practice what I preached a little last night and help our mother with the breakfast dishes. Oh, 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 I'll wash. Uh, okay, I'll wash. Yeah, and I'll see that you do it right. Oh, no, you don't. You just get a dish down. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, you're going to do the what, Chuck? You're going to do the scraping? Yeah, I'll scrape off that. Yes, let me put these in. Oh. Huh? <laughs> there we go. Right. Here's it. a nice pile. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there you are, boy. Thank you, you know, Margaret, what you said last night sort of started me to thinking. I dreamt about it all night. I don't know. I... What, dear? Well, about that 22-year thing, you know. My gosh, it seems like yesterday that we had our first Christmas with Sharon, you know? It, well, it seems longer than that to me. Yeah. The older I get, the faster time flies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I hope the older you get, the wiser you get. <laughs> oh, I'm doing all right, Dad. And I found out you don't learn everything from books, either. No? Meaning what? Mary Ann. I learned about women from her. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, Roger Kipling. <laughs> well, I hope you learned a little something to start. Mm. Oh, I'm doing all right, Mom, honest. Now, for instance, I have learned that if a guy really buckles down and, and, and applies himself, he can accomplish almost anything he wants to. Oh, wait, oh, you mean you're you're thinking about that time that you were selected to be the judge of the court, are you? Well, that's one thing. Well, now, let me tell you, you earned that one time. Yeah, but... I was sure glad I had you advise me. Yeah, well, that's what fathers are for, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it took me 19 years before I learned never to underestimate the power of a father. Hey, oh, well, thank you, son. Yes. Well, don't be rubbing the flowers off of that thing, you know. Try another one, try another one. And you know, the same rule applies to a mother, too, by the way. Oh, indubitably. Yes, sir. And speaking of mothers, now that we're throwing compliments around, Mother, we want to thank you. We have you to thank, you know, for being so nice to us and making all our lives worth living this past year, as always. Oh, well, now, dear, I didn't do anything different from the year before. Yeah, I said, as always. Uh -huh. <laughs> you want to go over to Lane Shoes with us, dear? Oh, dear, I just got so much to do. If you don't mind, I think I'll stay right here. Well, okay, okay, then. Chuck and Sharon and I will go. Oh, uh, Father. Huh? On, uh... On second thought, I, uh, I don't think I'll go. Yeah. Huh? Why not? What's the deal? Well, frankly, I'm a little ashamed to face you. <laughs> it was your idea. Well, I know, but like Father said, I shouldn't have ignored her. I, I should have taken the initiative and, and invited her over once in a while. Golly, with, with college and, and Jerry and everything, well, I, I just didn't have the time. And, and I, well, you know how it is. That, my dear, is what is known in psychological circles as justification by rationalization. Yeah, I'd forget about that whole deal if I were you and finish up and come on, let's get going now. Huh?
Yes. Hi, Elaine. Well, Sharon. Sharon Ruggles. It's me, all right. And Chuck. Yes, yeah, what? Oh, uh, Elena, I'd like you to meet my father. Yeah, well, oh, how, is... how do you do, Mr. Ruggles? How are you, Elena? I've been hearing a great deal about you oh, lately. Well, won't you come in? <laughs> well, thank, oh, thank you, you, thank you, Will. Thank you. I'm just finishing my holiday decorating. Oh? It's the first chance I've had. The babies have been keeping me so busy. Yeah, the babies? At the nursery. Oh? A lot of the mothers in this neighborhood work at night, so uh, I help take care of their children. Oh, well, I, I imagine the extra money comes in handy, eh, Elaine? Oh, we don't get paid. It's purely voluntary. Oh, well, may I take your things? Well, I'm afraid we can't stay too long. I, uh... Oh, your place is just beautiful. Mm. So, so sort of uh, clean and cozy. Oh, are you surprised? Oh, well, I, I, uh, that is... It's not what you expected, is that it? Uh, well, well, no. You see, I... Uh, well... <laughs> oh, I don't know. Why. Uh, well, uh, Chuck didn't mean it the way it sounded. No, you? he just opens up his mouth and you never know. That's right. That's I'm right. sorry. Uh, you needn't be. I understand. Uh, come and see my gallery. Uh, yeah? And my little Bethlehem. Him. Well, well, well. Isn't it beautiful? Well, my goodness, look at that, Bethany. Isn't that wonderful? It's that is really like something, like isn't it? Huh? <laughs> Say, I'll bet that really cost a lot. Oh, no. My father made these for me when I was a little girl. Oh? He carved all the figures out of wood with his penknife. Yes, that's And so. then Mother and all of us painted it together. They're amazing. Well, I mean, the detail is remarkable, isn't it? Look at that thing oh, in there. Yeah. Mama. I remember when he carved this wise man. Hmm? He told me the story of Jesus. Oh, when he was carving it, he told you the story of... Well, you and your father must have been very, very close. Hmm? Oh, we were. Hmm. He was terribly sentimental. He believed that happiness could cure anything. Oh, well, maybe he was right, by golly. He was full of all those corny old platitudes. Smile, and the world smiles with you. There's always a silver lining, and prosperity is just around the corner. Hmm. Why, he believed them all. Oh, yeah, well, how about you? Do you believe them? I think I do, but sometimes I get a little impatient. Well, don't we all? You know, life is very unpredictable, Elaine. <laughs> Father always used to say that life was an everlasting struggle to keep the money coming in and his hair from falling out. Yeah, well, that's a page out of my book. I'm losing mine any day now, I tell you. Hey, you know something? What? I'll bet the twins would really get a kick out of these. Yeah, yeah, they oh, well, would. Why don't you bring they, huh? them over? <clears throat> oh, my goodness. I forgot to ask you to sit down. Well, I was wondering <laughs> if you would like to Well, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. I... <clears throat> yeah. Um, Elaine. Yes? Um, I suppose you're wondering why we came over. Well, frankly, I am surprised. Well, um... Uh, as you know, we, we never palled around much in high school together, and, uh... uh let's, uh, get to the point, shall we, uh... uh look, Elaine, it being the holiday season, we all got to thinking about how lucky we are, and... And how we have everything that we could ever ask for. And how we'd like to share our happiness with someone, well, someone who is less fortunate? Um, well, yes. And you thought I might know of someone. Well, uh, oh, I do. There are lots of people in this neighborhood. Why, there's the Harringtons and uh, Mrs. Greenlee and Mrs. Joyce. Why, her three children have all been sick. And uh, then there's Mr. Hillman. Oh, there are lots of people. Uh, but, Elaine, you don't understand. You see, what we meant was that... Uh, 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 what uh, Chuck meant uh, was... Uh, that's exactly what we mean, Elaine. Yes, you see, uh, last night we talked over the idea of helping someone less fortunate than ourselves this year. And Chuck and Sharon suggested they come to you. Uh, they said that you knew a lot of people who needed help. So if you'll give us the uh, names and the addresses of those people, we'll probably see what we can do tomorrow. Hmm? Uh, how about it, Sharon, Chuck? Isn't that what we came for? Yeah, sure, that, that's right. Oh, yes, yeah, it's swell. Oh, they'll be very grateful, I know. <laughs> Mother and I do what we can, but it's never enough. And, well, Mother's in San Diego now, working over the holidays. Well, then you're alone. Until after New Year. Well, then we could spend the night together, you know, the whole evening. How about it, Dad? Oh. Yeah, maybe we could have dinner. Oh, that sounds like a wonderful idea. I'll tell you what, I've got plenty in the icebox, and I'd love to have you stay. But, Elaine, you don't understand. You see, and we... Donna and Donna will have a chance to see my gallery. Well, they'd be thrilled, Elaine, believe me. How about it, Mr. Ruggles? Uh, well, that's very nice of you, Elaine, but... Uh... You could go home and get Mrs. Ruggles and the twins, and in the meantime, I could start getting things ready. Uh, well, I, I tell you, I'll make a deal with you. A deal? I think Mrs. Ruggles 
Margot's has the dinner already prepared. In fact, she, she probably has it all fixed up and ready to put it in the oven, you know. So, But I'll tell you, uh, supposing you leave what you have in the icebox, and I'll get Mrs. Ruggles and the twins and the dinner, and we'll bring it over here. But I could just as now, well... Now, that is my ultimatum. Either you take us, or you take us and don't take us, or you do and you don't, or and take the dinner together. Very well, Mr. Ruggles, you win. All right, that's the deal, that's the deal. Come on, Chuck, we're going to need a little hand here. And, Sharon, you can stay with Elaine, you know, in case she needs some help. All right, honey. Okay. Hold on to your appetites, girls. We'll be back in a flash with a hat. Yeah, good. <laughs> my son. Thee, O Lord, for the bountiful meal of which we have partaken. We thank Thee for Thy guidance and protection, and for all the blessings You have bestowed upon us. Grant us continued health and happiness. Bless our country, that it may be a stronghold of peace and goodwill among men, Thy most precious gift. Strengthen the bonds of friendship and brotherhood between all the peoples of the earth. And may thy name hallow every home and every heart. Amen. Amen. May we please leave the table, Daddy? Huh? Yeah, we oh. want to see the manger. Oh, you the do? The wise men and all the other things. Oh, well, all right, all right, but be careful, please. Yes, I'm Don't break anything. We won't. We won't. My golly, up and down, up and down. I don't know whether we have twins or your animated pile drivers, <laughs> Elaine, you know? <laughs> well, all I can say is that was a wonderful dinner, and that roast was simply scrumptious. Aren't you forgetting who cooked it, Mr. Huh? Ruggles? Credit where credit is due. Yeah, all right, so I give you credit. It was out of this world. It is now, anyhow. But somehow or other, I don't know, I think maybe... Uh, well, uh, the atmosphere of this home seemed to make it taste even better. Yes, yes you're right. right. Mm -hmm. It's the Christmas spirit. The house has nothing to do with oh, it. Oh, okay. well, shall we go into my uh, parlor? Yes. Come on, sir, and the table. Oh, we can do those later. I hate dishes. Okay. Beautiful. Please go on. I'm unconscious. <laughs> oh, self-conscious. Yeah. Anytime you kids are self-conscious, yes. believe me. I'll tell you what we do. Suppose we all sing this together, huh? Oh, all right. Right. Now we all get it together. We all set now? Already. Ready? Oh, My golly, a voice like that's not going to hang around loose. You know what I'm going to do, Margaret? Yeah. I'm going to see Joe Conley of the Conley Recording Company and ask him if he won't listen to Elaine's voice. Would you mind if I did that? Oh, Would you sing I, for him? I just love it. Well, you're a natural, Elaine. Oh, yeah. yes. oh, Mr. Ruggles, you're uh, very kind. Oh, well, not. Why have you been hiding a voice like that under a bushel? Uh -huh. I haven't hidden it. I love to sing, but... It's just that I've been too busy to do anything with it. Oh, oh Elaine, you must sing. Oh, oh my, my, what surprises we've had this evening. <laughs> Haven't we, really? <laughs> Full of surprises, I'll oh. say, yes, sir. And by golly, not only surprises, but a lesson. A lesson for all of us. A lesson the Ruggles and all of us and every other family can profit by. You know, happiness is within oneself. It isn't uh, what we have or how much we have that counts. It's how much of what we have that we enjoy. You have that gift, Elaine, the gift of enjoying what you have and of giving it to others. You're a very lucky girl and much richer than most of us. Well, <laughs> Look at me making a little holiday speech here. <laughs> 
Well, now that I have, how's about giving us a little encore? Will you, Elaine? Oh, please, oh, you. you. What should I sing? Oh, oh, now, you sing what you like. Sing your favorite. Well, uh, let me look in my book. Oh, I know. Sing Little Red Riding Hood. This is my favorite, and I'm sure it's yours. A reminder of the simpler days when all the entertainment a family needed was a song to sing and each other. In our next show, we'll travel to Los Angeles and the search to find a missing statue of the baby Jesus only hours before Christmas Day Mass. Dragnet was first created as a radio show, but after immense success, it was adapted for the small screen. It first aired in 1951 and would run for the next eight years following the adventures of Sergeant Joe Friday, played by the show's creator, Jack Webb, and his partner officer, Frank Smith, portrayed by Ben Alexander. The show's name relates to the police term dragnet, meaning a system of coordinate measures for apprehending criminals or suspects. The show is almost instantly recognizable from its theme song titled Danger Ahead, composed by Walter Schumann and notably used in the 1946 film version of The Killers. Each show is organized in the same manner, starting with the visual of a police badge marked with the number 714 and a narrator that explains that the story you are about to see is true and is later followed by Joe Friday's description of the setting and details of the case at hand. In tonight's episode, we get the details on a theft at a local church on the day before Christmas. So, let's take a look back at the year 1953 as I remember television. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Wednesday, December 24th. We were working the day watch out of burglary division. The boss is Captain Bernard. My partner's Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Hi, Joe. Hi. Christmas cards, huh? A little late, aren't you? Well, I was going to send them out Monday, but we had that steak out. You ought to get married, Joe. Yeah? It's the only system. Faye does all that stuff for me. Laundry, mails cards, only system. Might help. You got a big stack there. I ought to cut down the list. Look at this here, upholstery shop. Yeah? They send me a card every year. I never get anything upholstered. 
Clay and I ought to go over our list. Cut off a few names. I brought in your present. Want to open it now? No, I'll wait. I always open a couple a day before. Why? Well, put you in the spirit ahead of time. I opened Phil's this morning. Who's he? Clay's brother in Denver. Gave me a magazine, one of those funny ones. What do you mean, a comic book? No, one of those funny ones, you know. No, I don't, Frank. Well, some of the pages have holes in them. You look through and there's a picture on the next page. Oh, yeah, I've seen those on the newsstand. They have cloth pasted in. Cloth? In the ads. If you want to buy a suit, they have a sample right there. You mean you can feel it? Reach right out and feel it. There was one for $200. A suit? Sure. Cloth comes from Scotland. What's it made out of, solid gold? No, they got a special kind of goat over there. It's real smooth. Not a goat, Frank. A sheep. Well, it's a special kind of sheep, then, because a suit costs $200. You gonna get one? I told Faye. She said, wear the sample. Anything doing? Fanning and Pryor were in on that market holdup. They come up with anything? Pound of air, nothing else. I hope it stays quiet. I got more shopping to do. I finished. What'd you get, Ann? Stationary set, some paper and envelopes, leather binding. Joe, you'll never learn. Well, what's the matter? No woman wants a stationary set. Get her something personal. Well, it's got her initials on it. No, no. You want something more sentimental, romantic. What'd you get, Faye? It's different in her case. What'd you get, Faye? Sewing machine. That's romantic. Well, it isn't a way. Why don't you buy her a catcher's mitt? Burglary Friday. Yes, that's right. You have the right department. All right, Father, we'll be right down. No, you can tell us about it there. Goodbye. The old mission church, they've had a theft. Collection money? Statue of the child Jesus. Frank and I checked out of the office and rode over to the church at the corner of Sunset Boulevard and Main Street, near the Union Station. It was an old church. It was there before there was a Union Station or trains to come into a station. The Padres from down in Mexico built it. The devout Mexicans in town still attended services there. Ten oh five a.m. We asked for Father Xavier Rojas, who had communicated with us. We were told he was inside. We found Father Rojas up near the sanctuary. He told us about the crib. It was a $70 duplication of the scene at Bethlehem. The parishioners had taken up a collection for it 31 years ago. It was put up every year on December 22nd and taken down after the holy season. It was beautiful, except that one of the shepherds had lost an arm, a sheep was old and cracked, and the infant Jesus was missing. I'm sorry to bother you, man. All right, Father. Especially now, the holiday season. We cash our checks, Father. You want to tell us what happened? Or what you think happened? I discovered the statue was missing right after the 6 o'clock mass. You say the 6? Yes. I started over to the rectory and stopped by the crib. Was the statue there before mass? I don't know. But it was there last night. How late is the church open? All night. You leave it wide open so any thief can walk in? Particularly thieves, Sergeant. You say it was there last night, Father. How late? 10 or 11 o'clock, we had confessions. No one saw it after that? One of the altar boys, he says it may have been there. He thinks it was. Did he see it? He's not sure. What's his name? Pardon me. Here's the schedule. You'll find the names for every mass there. Was there a big crowd at the 6 o'clock mass, Father? Not too many. Seven's the big one. People on their way to work. Did anyone stay after Mass, did you notice? Not especially. I came back here, took off the vestments. I suppose it was 10 or 15 minutes before I went back in the church. It was empty then? No, people were coming in for the 7 o'clock. 
Are these the Alder boys, James Cornine and Joseph Heffernan? That's right. Joe's the one who mentioned it might have been them. Did you check with the other priests, Father? Before I called you. None of them knows anything about it. Just for a check on the pawn shops, how much is the statue worth? In money? Well, that's the point in pawn shops, Father. Only a few dollars. We could get a new one, but it wouldn't be the same. We've had children in the parish. They've grown up and married. It's the only Jesus they know. We understand. And we've had children who died. It was the only Jesus they knew. So many of the people who come here are simple people. They wouldn't understand, Sergeant. It would be like changing the evening star. We'll do our best, Father. That's why it would mean so much to have it back for the first mass on Christmas. Not very long, Father. Less than 24 hours. If anything turns up here, you know where to get in touch with us. Yes. It's sad, isn't it? How's that? In so short a time, men learn to steal. Yes, but consider us, Father. Us? If some of them didn't, you and I'd be out of work. Ten fifty a.m. We notified pawn shop detail. We gave them a description of the missing object, the time, and the place of theft. A few minutes later, Frank and I checked out the two older boys. The first one, James Cornine, said that he knew nothing about it. After mass, he'd gone out the sacristy door and come straight home for breakfast. The second one, Joseph Heffernan, was not at home. His father said he had a part-time job. He'd have him get in touch with us after lunch. By 11.30 a.m., we'd run out of book procedure. We had a man to find. Our only clue, he'd been to church. We're police officers. My name's Friday. This is my partner, Frank Smith. Great to see you. Caught me in the middle of a big chess match. Where's your partner? Up in San Jose. We've been playing for years. I see. You know, we do it through the mail. I send him a move, he sends me one. You Mr. Flavin? How do you know? We never met. Your name's on the window out front. Mr. Flavin, we checked the other two religious stores in this neighborhood. They're closed. This is the best one anyway. 50% European items. We're checking the stores around the Mission Church. For what? Statue of the Child Jesus. Do you have one we could look at? Sure. No, sir, a larger one. You don't want a larger one, unless it's for a church. That's why you want a larger one. Could we see it, please? It's not my due to butt in, but unless you live in a big place, this will make your living room all a kilter. Yes, sir. Do most of the people who go to the mission church trade here? Good many of them, especially the kids. Why kids? More religious. Check on yourself. See if kids aren't more religious than you. Might be so. That's what's wrong with the world. Oh, I don't mean you're wrong with it. Everybody. Yes, sir. What if we could stick to the point, Mr. Flavin? Sure. A lot of people from the Mission Church come in here. Do people ever come in and sell back a religious article? Like a prayer book or rosaries? Yes, sir. Second hand, you mean? Yes, sir. Not since I've ever been around. It's silly. Why? People don't have religious articles so they can get rid of them. They have them so they can have them. But if a man had a statue and wanted to sell it, he'd come to a place like this. Sure, but he wouldn't want to sell it. He would if it was stolen. No, sir. If a man was to steal a statue, he'd be crazy or something like that. The only place he'd want to go is where crazy people are. You may be right, Mr. Flavin. I don't know what you fellas are looking for, but if it's somebody who stole a statue, he's crazy and you won't find him. You won't find him as long as you live, or in a million years. That should cover it. continued to check religious stores out as far as Van Ness. We asked the same questions. The owners gave us the same answers, but none of them were as encouraging as Mr. Flavin. Frank and I had lunch and reported back to the office. It was 1.30 p.m. I just checked for you in our lunchroom. Oh, we've been down in that theft of the mission. May get some action on the Patterson case. We locate him? They think he's on the bus from Sacramento. Well, that means the Bakersfield police. We'll wait and see. Sergeant Friday? He is. I'm Joe Heffernan. My father said you wanted to see me. Well, sit down, son. You didn't have to come in. A phone call would have worked. My father said to get on over. He says that any kid that uses phones is lazy. We want to ask you about this morning. You serve 6 o'clock mass? Yes, sir. I'm senior boy. So I get the 6. 
You're a senior and you take the early trick? Yes, sir. That way, if you receive communion, you get to have breakfast sooner. Father Rojas says you think the statue was there before Mass. I didn't look, but I have a feeling it was there. A feeling? You know, how you have a feeling about something, but you're not sure. Did you stay around long after Mass? I put out candles and hung up my surplus. How long would that take? About five minutes, maybe. Did any of the people at Mass stay on? Some moms do, especially ladies. Oh? Maybe they don't finish in time, or else they start new prayers. I don't know. So when you left, there were still some women there? No, sir. That was at first. After I went back to the sacristy, there was only this one man. What man? He comes at 6 o'clock all the time. Do you know his name? No, sir. But he works down in Olive, you know, paint shop, where they paint signs. Could you describe him? Sort of medium. He was wearing a suit that didn't match. Didn't match? You know, different pants than coat. How about his age? Oh, he's pretty old. Take a guess. About 40, maybe. There's nothing particular about him. Then why'd you notice him? I've seen him before. And the bundle, I guess. The bundle? Out in front. I saw him when he was coming out. He had this bundle, and he almost dropped it. How large a bundle? It's hard to say. Come on, son. Was it large or small, the size of the statue? About that big. Yes, sir. We located the sign shop. The suspect didn't work there anymore, but we discovered his name was Claude Stroop. We found out where he lived. 2.25 p.m., we arrived there. It was a hotel for men, mostly old men, mostly down and outers. It was called the Golden Dream. Police officers, we're looking for Claude Stroop. Hope Claude didn't get in any trouble. So do we, is he in? No. Uh, he's got room 307. You can check if you like. We'll take your word. Were you on this morning? Hmm? Huh? Yeah, the early shift. Well, we don't have shifts. My uncle owns the place. I'm the shift. Did Stroop spend last night here? Came in about 11. When did he leave this morning? Around 6, maybe before. Did he come back after? 8 o'clock or so, then left. Supposed to be back at 10. And pulls this trick. What trick? Our program. He knows the other fellas need him. Program? You're here at the hotel. Every Christmas we have a program. Put up a tree and sing. They're mostly old fellas. Singing like that makes them remember back when they were kids. Then Jimmy Finn comes on. Jimmy Finn? He shares number 409. His family once had a lot of money, so he tells the fellas about it. Stories about Christmas. How they had this big log and his grandfather used to start it up. And after dinner, everybody turned over his plate and there underneath was a $20 gold piece. Brand new one. When Stroop came in this morning, did he have a bundle? I didn't see him come in. You said you saw him. I saw him go out after, but not come in. When was that? Eight. If you want to look for a bundle, I could give you his key. We don't have a warrant. It's all right. I know about police. It's all right with me. It's not with us. I didn't mean that. I, I just meant it was all right with me. Good, Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen when the snow lay round about deep and crisp and even brightly shone the moon that night though the frost was cruel when the poor man came in sight gathering winter fuel this is the last rehearsal i got most of the songs down pat Sounds pretty good. Yeah, that's why it's a shame Claude isn't here. He's tenor and they need him to make it sound just right. Does Troop have a job? No, sir. He used to have jobs. Not much lately, though. Did he say where he was going? No, he should have. The fellas need him. When he comes in, will you call us? Sure, and uh, not say anything to him. Huh? That's right. I hope it's nothing serious for Claude. The fellas' troubles ought to be over. Troubles? Way back. It wouldn't count. Well, Tell us anyway. Well, I don't know much about it. As much as you know. Now, come on. Well, something back where he used to live robbed somebody or something. What else? That's all. It was a long time ago, way far back. But he forgot it all, the robbing and everything. No, not quite. Hmm? He remembered it this morning. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. For Jesus Christ our Savior was born upon this day. We 
We ran Claude Stroop's name through R&I. If he'd been booked anywhere, we had no record of it. At least not under that name. 4.15 p.m., pawn shop detail reported back. Up until that time, no object resembling the statue of the child Jesus had been turned in. Patterson's on that Sacramento bus. I thought Bakersfield had it. They were supposed to confirm. They did. Hopper station. What about Fanning and Pryor? They're still out. Well, they'll be back soon. When's the bus arrive? Six o'clock. Well, there's plenty of time for them to make it. There's more time for you. We're still on that path. Can it wait? No. What is it? Ten, fifteen dollar statue? When's the price to determine a case? I realize it's a church statue, but that doesn't give it priority. It's important to them, Captain. Joe and I promised to get it back. What do you got on it? Nothing much. And why are you so big hearted? Burglary Friday. When? No. Don't say anything. No. Right. It's Claude Stroop. He just walked into the hotel. He's our suspect. Nobody's leaked to him? No. You'll keep. You can run him down tomorrow. It'll be too late then. I need it for the first mass in the morning, Skipper. It's kind of a big thing for them. I'm sorry. I can't juggle details around so you can get a statue back. If this time later on, we'll do our best. Yes, sir. You better get over to the station. Yes, sir. Will you call Father Rojas over at the mission? Why? Tell him we're too busy to work on that statue. Well, we'll do it later. Tomorrow or when we get the chance. Why can't you call him? Well, we better get over to the station. If Patterson's on that bus, we don't want to miss him. All right, I'll call him. Righty. Yeah. I can send Fanning and Pryor over. You might as well stand that other thing. Whatever you say, Captain. Four forty three PM. We arrived at the Golden Dream Hotel. The desk clerk was right. Claude Stroop looked like a man who'd had his troubles at bargain rates. Your name Claude Stroop? Yes, sir. Police officers, we'd like to talk to you. I didn't do anything against the law. Honest, I didn't do anything against it. You haven't been accused. I want to take you downtown. We'd like to talk to you. No, sir, I'm not going. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to talk to anybody. You're half wrong already. At 15 p.m., we returned Stroop for interrogation. He kept his word. He refused to talk. 6.05 p.m., Frank called Faye, told her that he'd be a little late. Stroop didn't move for a whole hour. He sat and stared, but he didn't talk. 6.40 p.m., we got a final report from pawn shop detail. The shops were closed. There was no statue. Stroop still hadn't talked. Don't you ever want to go home, Stroop? If I was to talk, he wouldn't let me go. Depends on what you'd say. I'd say it wrong, and I wouldn't get home. You won't this way, either. I'd like to go. You can bet on that. This is the seventh year we had the program, and I never missed a one. Not a single one. Why don't you tell us what happens, Drew? How would I know you'd let me go? You wouldn't. I might as well, anyway. All right, what happened from mass on? Well, there was mass. I came out and started down toward the hotel. Back up. I left my stuff at the hotel, and then I picked up George's car. I didn't steal it. He said I could have it any time I wanted. Only this time I didn't ask him. I took it and started out. Yeah. I should have asked, but I just didn't. I went over to Grand Avenue for the Christmas bulbs for this fellow sells in second hand. It was coming out of the lot, but I did it. Yeah. The bumper must have caught the other car. Didn't leave too big a dent, but there was this long scratch. I got off and tried to wipe it off with my handkerchief. You know, spit on it like. Only it didn't do no good. I didn't think anybody saw. I don't know how you fellows found out about it. I'll check all the records. Right. Stroop, we didn't bring you down here to talk about that. You didn't? No. There's a statue missing from the church. A statue of the child Jesus. You mean I took it? You took a bundle out of church. Yes, sir. That was my other pants for the program tonight. I had a place sewed up, and there was a button on it. You can check. But I wouldn't take a statue. I don't think you would either. He's clear at auto records. Go on home. For the program? You mean it's all right? Good night, Stroop. Good night. Merry Christmas. Where are you?
hour, too. Well, I don't know. We could stay and work on it tonight. Wouldn't do any good. We won't find it. I don't think so. No use kidding the priest. Build his hopes up. Might as well go tell him now. Merry Christmas. 7.27 p.m. We arrived at the old Mission Plaza church. Frank told Father Rojas how it was, that we couldn't get the statue back by morning, but that we'd keep trying during the week. He said he understood. We told him we had to get on. Paquito? Padre Rojas? It's Paco Mendoza, a boy from the parish. Ask him where he found it. Donde lo encontraste? No le encontré, le cogí esta mañana. He didn't find it, he took it. Why? Por qué? He says all through the years he's prayed for a red wagon. This year he prayed to the child Jesus. He promised that if he got the wagon, the child Jesus would have the first ride in it. He wants to know if the devil will come and take him to hell. That's your department, Father. No, el diablo. Jesus ama a Paquito mucho. understand how he got that wagon today. Don't kids wait for Santa Claus anymore? It isn't from Santa Claus. The firemen fix old toys and give them to new children. Paquito's family, they're poor. Where are they, Father?
I'm glad Friday and Alexander solved that case. Talk about a time crunch, huh? If that show's ending didn't embody the Christmas spirit, then I don't know what does. Thank goodness for Joe Friday's narration. It provides so much helpful background information. Jack Webb was well known as a stickler for detail because he believed that his viewers wanted the most accurate and honest portrayal of the world of policing. Webb was also passionate about respecting law enforcement officers, so he wanted to do them justice and show how much they helped the community. So until our next case, when we again venture back into the golden days, the days that remind us of where this magic all began, as I remember television again. <laughs>